Hi folks, Tim Whiteman here, and we're going to talk a little bit more about than just milking cows and how to set up milk houses, what to look for in a farm that has a milk house, and take some of the ideas that I promote through the Cowshare College and Goatshare University to make your life a lot easier and keep your products cleaner and safer through the milking practices and the building uh, ideas that we're going to show you. Show you. We have a rule in the milk house, and I suggest creating one yourself. Anything that's clean is upside down. That's the way it comes out of our dishwasher. So anything that's stored that's clean is upside down. If it's right side up, it's not clean. If you don't know for sure, we don't use it. We wash it again, just to be safe. There was a, a fluorescent light, this unit as well. I took it out. It made it shine real nice, but fluorescent lights will skunk the milk as well. So what we use is food grade bleach. If you use Clorox bleach from the store, yes it is cheaper, but they use solvents and those solvents are very hard. My suggestion is getting smooth bottom boots because if you get anything with a tread on them, it's always compacted in the tread and you're always bringing it into the milk house. So these are really did put in rubber mats into this parlor. So at the point in the future when in the winter time, if it's really, really cold, I can move four cows in here and keep it 50, 60 degrees all night long and I don't have to use external heat like a torpedo heater or even mount a heater to keep this warm in the winter time and then we can start switching cows in and out. Curry comb we're using is actually a dull old curry comb so we can use it on the udders, it works pretty well. Okay, what you just saw here is basically heifer training 101 to point out what can happen if we have too high a potassium pay. So basically what we see here is colostrum that's a little bit of red. The gloves that I use are just basically uh, latex gloves. Um, the ones I try to get are without the powder inside, but there are some that come with powder inside. They're just straightforward medical industry uh, latex gloves. And you can see I can use this to basically clean up from out there before I do too much in here. That way we don't have any cross-contamination issues. Uh, while we were um, in the parlor, I started this system. Basically what you have to do is just run some hot water through it to get heated. It's already warmed up. We're already separated a little bit. We're going to pour more in, and then I'm going to start filling milk jugs. As you've probably noticed, I basically add layers on when I'm milking and as I'm doing different stages of filling containers or cutting into the milk house, the layers come off. That way, when I'm doing filling milk jugs or doing cream, um, the outside layers are off. This is clean so we don't have any hair or dirt or other unfriendlies on our sleeves that would fall into uh, the open milk bucket. I keep them covered as much as possible, but as soon as you take the lid off and pick them up, it's a good possibility for things to fall off. So you want to make sure that you're clean. We've got our cow's milk, we've got our cream separated, we've got gallon jugs cooling in the water. Now it's clean up on the equipment. What we're going to do is we're going to do it in stages, and I'll explain the kind of soaps we're using, what practices we have to do to keep these milking units clean and in good shape.